just gonna lift it up a bit. Okay. Hello everyone. Jack here with Dad. I'm gonna take a look and make sure we're actually on. My software says we should be streaming, but I always like to check. So I'm gonna check real quick. Hey there, my boy. Hello, Daddy. So tell everybody what kind of day you had. Mm, a good day. You had a good day? Yeah, three and a half more days of school. Three and a half more days and then it'll be over? my heart. Actually, no, now two and a half, but... Yes. Well, not counting weekends, but, you know. <laughs> Whoa. So you have two and a half days not counting weekends. Four and a half. Is the last day of school a half day? Yep. Nice. Oops, here, let me switch this over so I can see what's going on. All right. It's raining in parachute, too. <laughs> Whoa, hello, everyone. Hi. You lovely day, raining here in parachute. <laughs> Hi, Mike and Jack. Hello. Well, the boys told me they didn't want to be on the show, but I thought I would go come on and do a casual one today, even though Friday's not our usual show day. <laughs> but I'm enjoying the time here with Jack. So, hello. So today... I just thought I'd come on for just chit-chat and questions and answers. And if there's something you want to ask me when Tara's not around, <laughs> this would be a good time. We had a lot of people asking um, faith and Bible questions before, and I'm happy to answer with what I can on that too. So just whatever you feel like, put it in there. Meanwhile, we're looking. Wow. Hello from sunny Wisconsin. What? It's like raining everywhere else. <laughs> Oh, Amy, hey, y'all, we're camping. That sounds like fun. All right. So so you have two and a half days of school left. Yes. So I just found this out about a week ago. Except well, four and a half counting the weekend. <laughs> four and a half counting the weekend. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, cool. Thanks for loving the picture behind us. <laughs> that was Tara has... Um, she got some pictures to try to spruce up the show at different places, so. Let's see. Greetings, Mike. Jack, what breed is your dog? How old is he? Male or female? Rescue. Yes, he's a rescue dog. Buster! <whistles> see if he'll come over here. I might have to pick up the computer that's streaming and turn it that way. Buster, come here! <whistles> here, can you bring him over there and we'll show you? All righty, here's Buster right here. Jack, pet him so he looks this way. Maybe turn him around just a little bit. Turn around, there he is. So this is Buster. He's a Bichon, a Bichon Frigé. Bichon. And um, he is a rescue dog. We actually, um, when we got him, Sara and I, we weren't really looking for a dog and we were in no more pets mode. And Tara said, oh, he's like our old dog that we used to love a lot. And um, Let's just go look, but we're not gonna actually get him. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> so we ended up going and he was at a house and this single lady had him, but she had moved in with her son. And he had a bunch of um, big dogs that were really attacking Buster and I think the lady didn't really know how to take care of dogs because he had these really big mats on him that were full of fleas and stuff and he he was just really not feeling well at all and when we went there were two little girls the oldest is probably Jack's age now and um, they were petting him and saying how much they loved him and all but Tara said do you do you what do you think and I said well I don't really want a dog but I feel so bad leaving him here. <laughs> so we ended up taking him and cleaning him all up. And um, uh, basically the lady said that she lived alone with the dog and then she had to move in with her son and they put the dog out. Her son wanted the dog to be out in the garage with his dogs and there were big dogs that attacked him and stuff. So anyway, he had had a rough life before. But he's been a really good dog, although he's probably, uh, we, won't, we probably won't get any, any more. But we do love him a lot. So, <laughs> and he's male. Yeah. So, let's see. Good evening from Kentucky. I wasn't sure you were coming on. Well, hello, Margaret. It's good to see you. Yeah, I thought 
on Wednesday, I think I kind of got the idea that maybe I'd come on today. Um, and I, I just thought it'd be nice to come on and be casual and chit chat. Eva, do you think it's a good idea to take out a home equity loan to fix up your house to increase the value before selling? No. <laughs> um, I wouldn't probably ever take out a home equity loan, but, um, but typically what happens when people take out home equity loans to fix, well, when people spend a lot of money to fix up a house before selling, normally you don't get back the money that you spend. So I would probably like clean it up. If it's, if it's dirty, I'd clean it up. If, if the walls are really scuffed and everything else, you might paint a little bit here and there. And that's about all I would do. So even here in Colorado, our house, the carpet's really worn out and we'd like to change it, but we're thinking we probably will try to move in the next year or so. And so we know that in Colorado, people will buy the house and then they'll just tear out the carpet and put in whatever they want. So we'd rather give them a little bit of a, we'd rather say, hey, there's, we'll, we'll put a little money into the deal. So as part of the replacement of the carpet fund, and then we won't change it. So uh, I used to be a real estate appraiser. And at the time, uh, a lot of people would put money into fixing up things to sell a house. And they would probably spend twice as much as it increased the value of the house. So, but the home equity loan, I would really avoid for pretty much anything. Um, so let's see. Is that the next one? Hi, Jeanette in New Jersey. Adaptive Maritime in Nova Scotia. Oh, that sounds awesome. Um, what grade are you in, Jack? Fourth. About to go into fifth. So he's on his last couple days of fourth grade. Yep. And he also has a birthday coming up in less than three weeks. Three weeks, yeah. So, and then he would be 10. Oh, um, so Buster's, as far as we can tell, he's a Bichon Fugé. We had one before. I always like to try to say that word. <laughs> Who knows if I'm actually saying it right. But he, um, sorry, I had a thought come across my mind. Um, he's poodle-like, though. So, And there's possibly some poodle in him, but he's, he's a lot of Bichon. So... The Mike and Buster show. Yeah. Uh, wow. Margaret says, Jack, you get out really early in Virginia. I think it's about the 14th of June. Wow. That's late. He does have to be back early. So we're going on our trip out of the country. And when we come back. Uh, I have to be back at August 14th. And we're supposed to be back August 13th. And school starts August 14th, right? So yeah. we notified the school today that if there's jet lag or something, he might be a couple days late. But the first few days are usually not doing very much significant. Although, when at the school where he is, when you go into the fifth grade, um, it's kind of a, a big jump because it goes from being elementary kids to moving towards middle school kids, and their, their process is a lot different. Ah, uh, adorable. Yay. <laughs> Hello, Tracy. Yeah, when Jill's here, we usually try to put her on, but <laughs> we had tried at one point to be able to do live interviews with her, but the software wasn't cooperating, although eventually we... Um, we would like to upgrade our software, so that might change. How are the girls liking their time away? They seem to be enjoying themselves greatly. Okay. <laughs> Tara's been sending me all kinds of... She figured out on... Uh, Ellie, I think, showed her how to get the little gifts and memes on her phone. <laughs> so she's just been bombarding me with all these cute little hearts and love things and hugs and all that. And usually when she does that, it tells me she's feeling really good, uh, which... That, that was, I was just going to put the computer on that, but I put on this one instead. Um, and they keep, they call every now and then or text to s just say they they just left the hot springs and now they're going back to the hotel. Okay, now they're going to the pool. Now they're going back to the hot springs. So they seem to be liking it. And it's helping, I think, that Tara did not take her computer. See, I've got it right here. <laughs> so uh, let's see. Thanks for sharing, Buster. Oh, uh, you had to put your lasso up so down. That's so sad. Well, that's one of the things about pets that I struggle with is um, they, they, you know almost for certain that they're gonna, you're going to outlive them, and it's, it's really been a sad thing when we lose one. In fact, we lost a cat recently that we had. We've actually lost three cats. Yeah. One died and, no, two died. One, we, one of the cats 
when it's just being tortured by the others. Yeah, when Emily came to live with us, we got two. She had two cats, and so that added to the cat and dog we already had, and it created a lot of chaos with the animals, and they were highly stressed. And the one where one particular cat really was not at all handling the stress well, so we ended up finding a new home for her. She needed uh, a place where there weren't any other pets, and ideally just one person. And I think she ended up with a single older lady, which would be perfect. Um, then we had one cat that had diabetes uh, that died unexpectedly one day, and then one that we thought would last a long time, who was young, uh, but he accidentally got in the neighbor's yard and, and had a fight to the death with their dog. Mm-hmm. And oh, their dog almost died too. So that I was no pretty idea. Tough. We don't actually know how he got into the um, backyard because he's not the kind of cat who just walks right out of our front door. Yeah, he would never leave the yard. Every he time would, he just goes. Every time he like walks out, he just kind of comes back because he's afraid. Yeah, he was afraid to go anywhere outside of our yard, so he was always in the backyard. And Tara does, has a lot of gardens all around the edges. So it's like a lot of jungle for him, and he was always having fun chasing butterflies and birds and things. And we think maybe he uh, jumped to get a butterfly because there's a spot where the fence is shorter by the neighbor's house because it steps down from our place to theirs. And uh, he's, I think he accidentally jumped over the fence there. So, um, I can, you know, get back because it's bigger there. Yes. Uh, Melissa, should we pay off our credit card debt before putting extra toward our mortgage principal? I probably would pay off all the credit card debt first. Uh, But the thing is, if you start with the credit card debt and you pay the smallest balance first, you eliminate them. And then if you keep putting the same amount of money you were paying, even with the one that's now paid off on the next one, it makes it go faster. And it it's probably better to pay off the credit cards first just to get them out of the way completely and then just dump everything you can on the house. That's what I would recommend. We did pay extra on the mortgage. I guess we didn't pay extra on the mortgage when we had credit card debt. Um, It's been so long since we had credit card debt, I can't remember. But we thought about it in those days, but we really got serious about it um, sometime after the credit cards were paid off. So yeah, I do the credit cards first. And again, I wouldn't pay extra on any credit card except one. And I would put everything you can on that one until it's gone. And then turn everything you can towards the next one. It's really cool because you end up getting a lot of freedom where you feel like, um, you get a lot of freedom where you feel like, wow, suddenly I don't have that payment anymore. And then you put that on there and pretty soon you start realizing you have a lot of extra money you didn't have before. And that's great. And as long as you keep putting it on debt and your mortgages and stuff, it'll make it go faster and faster. So, uh, Chewy, I, I knew somebody who had a dog named Chewy, <laughs> and he looked like Chewbacca, too, a little, I forgot what it was, but it was brown and had fluffy face, like, kind of like Chewbacca. So, hi, Della and Iowa. Uh, let's see. I thought I saw another question that I didn't want to miss any as we go. Oh, I forgot. I'm, I'm only looking at the YouTube side. Sorry, Facebook. Let me switch over there. Um... Uh, when does Jack start again? He starts school again on August 14th. Uh, and we're actually supposed to not be back from... Norway is our last stop on our trip, and we'll be back from there on August 13th. So so I think we'll probably have him missed the first couple of days of school. Yeah. Oh, so Buster has been shaved. Jill had mentioned that. Buster has been shaved for summer, so he's his hair is really thin right now, but he oftentimes gets kind of poofy like a little teddy bear. Yeah, he gets really poofy. Really cute. And he's getting kind of old now, so he walks around a little slower. And, <laughs> Christina, I'm going to love answering your question. He walks a little, he gets around a little slower, and some days um, he doesn't walk, you know, really perfectly. And we have these uh, old age medicine things to give him that's supposed to lubricate his joints and stuff. Christina, how many times has Tara set fire while cooking? Like Thanksgiving. Like 500,000 times. <laughs> she has set fire. When not, she hasn't set fire to that degree where there's all kinds of smoke and flames and uh, smoke detectors go off. If you guys don't know what we're talking about, back in our channel a little ways, um, I think if you just type in fire, on the, there's a search that's just for our channel on uh, YouTube, on Living on a Dime. And if you click on that little search that's down in our channel and type in fire or Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving on fire was the title. You can see what she's talking about. Tara has burned a lot of things over the years. And 
but mostly not in flames. Is that something on fire? Yes, yes. What do you remember? Um, well, it was, there was a couple of times I worked on the show. Do you want to sit next to me, or do you want to just stand? Um, so there, oh, uh, oh. So, um, there was one time that I think was not being recorded, um, when she was the last well, The mic is here, so you know. Oh, it is? Yeah. Um, yeah, and four? she, you know, I remember that there was, I went over and I saw, like, there was flames in the oven, and I'm like, hmm. That doesn't look right. <laughs> <laughs> At the time, I was like, what is that? <laughs> Why is the oven on fire? <laughs> I didn't really think much of it. I was just like, <laughs> But yeah, she so she doesn't burn that often, but she mostly when she's burns when she burns things, she's not feeling well with her chronic fatigue and her fibro uh, fibromyalgia, and she will walk away from the stove for a minute because something distracts her, and then she'll forget that she's cooking at all. And and, all. and if nobody notices between the times, then. There will be smoke, or somebody will say, "What's that smell?" or something like that. So she mostly she burns it when she's not feeling well, or like I said, when she gets really distracted by something. Although <laughs> there was this kind of a joke that when BJ was little, our oldest, he uh, one time when the smoke detectors went off, he yelled, "Dinner's done!" <laughs> I think he was about ten or so at the time. <laughs> so that was pretty funny. Let's see. Uh, whoops. What was for dinner tonight? Uh, we haven't actually haven't had dinner so far, but we were still working on the hamburger or the cheeseburger um, roll the other day. I don't know if we have any more of that left, so we'll have to see. After this, we'll go ahead and get some food. Oh, we're a little oh. more relaxed because it's the weekend. Hey, our, from Michigan, Ladiana. Our, our Hi, favorite Marie. viewer is giving us kisses and hearts and hearts. Our favorite viewers giving us hearts and kisses. Is that Tara in an undisclosed location in Colorado? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yep. Tara and Ellie are on. Are you guys having a good time? Everyone's asking. I just received my new cookbook. I'm super excited. Thank you, Trinity. I hope you really love it. Um, <laughs> we put a lot of work into it. And we're hoping to get another one out at the end of this year. Our trip might cause a little bit of delay in that. We hope not. So we'll see. Um, sorry, I'm pasting in a link there. Oops, what did I do? Oh, you minimized. <laughs> I was looking for comments and I clicked away. Okay. There we go. We're back. Um, I was watching your series on your story. So wonderful. So inspiring. Thank you for sharing your story. Oh, thank you. And, and testimony. Thank you very much, Karen. Uh, lots of kisses from mom and hearts. Sorry, I've got my... So for you younger people, when you get to be 40, suddenly you can't see up close anymore. And I, and I finally figured out that's why older people do this. Let's see. How, how do you determine when to replace a major appliance? Our 5.4 5 cubic chest freezer works great, but is about 40 years old. If it works great, I would keep it. Um... If you're worried that it's usually, wow, that's really good. They're probably more efficient if they're newer, but rather than replace it, because a lot of times the savings isn't worth it, you can go get this little thing at Home Depot. It's not very expensive. And you can, it's a little meter that tests how much electricity an appliance uses. And you can plug it into the wall and then plug the freezer into that and see if it's, if it looks like, you would save a huge amount of money on the energy costs, then I would do that. But we typically, we've never had anything last that long. But um, for us, normally the appliances will start doing things like a freezer, the compressor will start squealing and making noises randomly or something like that. So I wouldn't get rid of it unless, if it's working fine, I wouldn't get rid of it unless you maybe get one of those plug things and you discover it's dry, drawing a massive amount of power. So... Hello, Barbara. 
Got my soap this week and it smells so good. The cream is nice too. Wow, that mm. goat's milk cream has been really popular. It's really loud, Daddy. What? Um, if, if, if your chest freezer is 5.4 square feet, that if it's a perfect cube, then it is 1.8 square feet on each side. Whoa. <laughs> I mean, two feet. I'm glad you figured that out. Hey, and Tara Kellum is on, and she says, I want to know who has the best wifey in the whole wide world. I think that would be me. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Marie, we have a Bijan and Buster. Oh, it got cut off. It looks like you're going to say it resembles them. Ooh, Christina, my kids had their last day on Thursday. Wow. Uh, um... Jill says on the appliances, she personally replaces it when uh, they start breaking down. She has to have two or three repairs, especially major repairs on it. Yeah, for us, we do look at, if we have to put a repair in that's more than a few hundred dollars, we start thinking, how much is a new one? <laughs> a new one is $3. Yeah. Have I been cooking every night? No, <laughs> I have not been. Um, actually, I cooked something last night. I guess I've been cooking more than I realized. Oftentimes when it's just us boys home, uh, Dave and Jack will eat some cereal, and they seem happy with that. Jack loves it. He asked me for quesadillas one night, and I made quesadilla for him. But I think I, he asked for garlic, and I put a little too much on. Uh, yesterday I just well, made I some macaroni. Feeling good about that time you weren't feeling good? Yeah. Last night I made him some macaroni, because that's what he asked for. So, let's see. So, actually, they're at Glenwood Springs, <laughs> but there are hot springs in other places, too, like, um, I forgot what, where are, there are a lot of places with hot springs. Oh, uh, hello. Uh, Tara says, Heidi and I have a video coming up in freezers. Oh, awesome. Well, that's good to know. Should we pay all the credit card debt before looking to buy a house? Um... Well, let's see. I could think of what the Tara answer would be. I would probably try to pay off. It depends. If you're in a real estate market where the values just jump up dramatically and they never come down again, uh, and you don't have a massive amount of credit card debt, personally, I would probably try to pay off the debt first, the credit card debt. But if the market is increasing so fast that, like in Colorado, our house doubled. It went from like 200,000 to 400,000 value in five years. And if it's increasing that quickly, it might be good to get in to a, get to get into a mortgage and lock it in and then hit the debt really hard. And ideally a mortgage on a, the smallest house that works well for you because then you can pay it off a lot easier. If you get something a little bigger that's got um, more, if you get something a little bigger that costs more with a bigger mortgage, it's harder to pay extra on the bigger mortgage. So. Uh, that would probably, I would, if if the house prices are pretty stable, like when we were in Wichita, they don't change that much, then I would knock out all the credit card debt first. And also here in Colorado, the rentals are like $1,500. Uh-oh, good question from Cindy. I didn't see. Oh, Cindy, I think your question might have gone off the screen before I saw it. So if you could post it again, that would be awesome. Or if somebody, oh, wait. Uh, or maybe that is the one I answered. Oh, okay, that's one I just answered. Okay, good. Um, who is the best mother-in-law in the world? I think my mother-in-law is Jill Cooper. <laughs> uh, he's 50, Somebody asked, Tar says he's 15. Oh, Tar says she thinks Buster's about 15. We don't know for sure uh, because when we got him, they didn't really know his age, but we think he's about 15. Darlene, I love the wall looking back of you. Yes, so Tar got some new pictures for largely for the places that we use for the show but she actually there's some places where we haven't done anything for the show and um and so that's one of them they look really nice though and i'm glad she did <laughs> tara i hope you're enjoying your girl and your girl's trip yes i'm sure they are she just keeps throwing kisses that's a good sign and that makes me feel like she's feeling a little better so that's awesome hi stacy from pittsburgh who used to live in denver <laughs> Wow. Funny thing is, we live, what we're in used to be way out in the country, but now they consider it part of the Denver metro, but I can't imagine being actually in the city. It's kind of crazy enough out here. 
Oh, yay, Trinity. I'm glad you're really loving the book. Tina, what are we doing for retirement planning? Um, at the moment... That is <laughs> yeah. weird. Yes. At the moment, we aren't. <laughs> well, we are, but our first plan was for retirement was to pay off the house because then we'll have a place for that. Uh, now we're going to start investing the money we've been paying on the house and other things over the years. Uh, we're not sure what we're investing it in yet, though. I would like to do some real estate, um, but the market kind of fluctuates up and down, and I think we're still kind of on a higher side of the market in Colorado, so it might be wise for us to wait a little bit. Um, we do also want to buy... Tara would like to buy a, a different house, which might end up costing us a little more. If so, we would knock out... If we had a, a little bit of a mortgage on that, we'd probably knock that out pretty quick too but what we'd like to do with that is get a place that's a little bigger that has more property ideally with some other buildings but we could put them on ourselves where we could maybe airbnb some of them because the area where we live is really close to the rocky mountain national park and the income from something like that would be really useful for building up retirement stuff so uh we're, we're planning to invest it but we're not entirely sure what in yet um but i think i like real estate better than a lot of securities and things so we'll see um, but it is nice not having any mortgage and not having any other debt and having because we also realized recently wow our business actually has value it never occurred to us that there's value in the business so that's all really helpful of course we would never borrow the money out of it or anything like that <laughs> let's see one thing on the retirement that a lot of people don't think about is for us, we consider that having the house paid off will make it much easier. But some people that really want things now, like the fancier, I say nicer, fancier cars, um, car payments are just really, really bad for your future financially. And just a lot of things that people want to have now that aren't really necessarily important to you in your heart, but kind of want to do what everybody else is doing. And a lot of people think of today only, and they don't think about the future. And what we realize is cutting things that we don't need, um, it's going to make it a lot easier for preparing for the retirement stuff. I don't anticipate repair, retiring really ever, <laughs> but certainly not for a very long time unless, you know, get disabled or something like that. So, wow, Cindy, our debt is under $6,000. Thank you, Mike. Yes. Oh, yes, she is Mike. <laughs> yes, she is Mike. Right answer. Thank you. Um, I'm going to have to. I should have got my bifocals. <laughs> then everyone could see. Hi, Jack. Jacqueline Hello. says. Oh, and Jacqueline is similar to Jack, huh? Mm -hmm. And here's another Jack. Oh, that's the same one. Oh, you raised your voice great. So well behaved and courteous. Okay, so story about that. We... We're going to stay on a farm. One of the places we're going to stay on our trip is a farm uh, in Ireland. And the family said, no kids. And then it, I wasn't sure what age of kids they meant. So I sent them a thing saying, hey, we have one that's 10. I don't, I'm not sure if that's okay, but he's very well behaved. And he'll be respectful uh, if, if you let us stay there. And she said, we'll be happy to have you. So I'm sure we'll be proud of of him on that so <laughs> um oops where was i jack did i miss it uh, yes yeah i'm sorry ricky we did everything right but a family member destroyed it so when my husband passes we'll have nothing that is um i'm sorry about that i would say uh for people when you're I have found that it's good to not be financially involved with other family members except the ones that you're married with because then you become responsible for their bad behavior that way. I'm not speaking to you specifically, Ricky, just other people who might be seeing what you're saying about struggling with that thing. It's never too late to, I mean, it's never too late to kind of think about that, but obviously it's, it's very, I'm sure it's very frustrating. I'm sorry about that. Do we teach like Dave Ramsey? Um, not exactly the same. Tara and Jill have some different thoughts than Dave about some stuff, but I think I think we would we would get along well. He 
um, he has a little different technique about some things. I'm trying to think of what. Um, there are some things like, well, actually, I'm not really sure, <laughs> to be honest, what's different. I my, I personally like Dave a lot, um, but our stuff is a little different. I think we're more on the practical living part, and he's more of the kind of business, uh, thinking about money in that sense way. Um, Stormy, I live in upstairs an older house. If a tornado was near, not sure where to go. Too hard to make it downstairs if the landlady is gone. Um, oof. I, maybe the bathroom would be best. Okay, so, wow. I can't be very, I, I probably can't necessarily advise you very well on that. Typically, unless you're unable to get down the stairs, I would, what we did, at one house we had a basement and a lot of people didn't, so we kind of talked to the neighbors and said, hey, come over to our house. So if you're able to get, I, can't, I thought you were pretty mobile still. So if you can get to somebody, I, if you could do that, I would ask your neighbors, hey, if there's a tornado, can I come over here? I would really be reluctant to be upstairs in a house during a tornado. Um, but if there was absolutely no choice, then you have to make do with what you have. Usually they say getting in the bathtub is really great. You say there's a, a window above the tub. The thing is, if you're in the tub and you cover your head, tornadoes blow horizontally. So it would seem less likely that you get injured from that. But I would be concerned being upstairs in case the tornado takes the top of the house off. So I'm sorry, that's probably not the best answer. <laughs> uh, Cindy, maybe buy a townhome to rent out. We moved from one country to another to be closer to our children and grands. Today I was looking around, and when we left there seven years ago, we were paying 800 for rent and now 1200 So this is California. Yes. That's one thing we were thinking is because we're in Colorado and the prices sometimes go down um, the prices sometimes go down a little but they always come back here other places we live they were just going completely down uh, all right I'm gonna switch over here because I've been on Facebook for a little while let's check the YouTube side here uh, regarding the debt snowball how do you get your husband to want to pay off debt and stop getting more loans um, so this is what, he doesn't have to seem to understand that we can't keep doing this and he's planning on retiring in five years. Um, unfortunately, it's probably a marriage type issue if he doesn't respect you in that way. It might be helpful to tell him, you know, hey, I, I, I feel unsafe when, uh, when at the thought of us having no money. And when we are when we're getting loans and things, we're living beyond what we can really afford. Actually, I was kind of telling Jack this because yesterday, because I've heard people say, "Well, I I would get rid of my credit cards, but I can't afford to buy all the stuff we need without them." If that's the case, that means you think you need more stuff than you need, because uh, you should never need to live on credit cards. But in his case, it kind of sounds like my dad. Um, I guess I shouldn't say that out loud, but anyway, uh, he he used to have a problem with not getting thinking about more more debt in terms of doing other things, and I I think um, the problem is if he won't, I would talk to him and tell him Dave Ramsey actually had a good way of explaining this to somebody once, but basically to tell uh, to kind of tell him how you feel and how you think it's affecting you and your marriage and how. Um, you know, money problems really cause you a lot of stress and you don't think that we need that. Maybe if you can somehow break down a way to show him visually, um, like when we retire, we're going to have to do this with our money. And if we have these loans, it's going to cost us this and we're not going to have that freedom. But at the end of the day, probably I would, if you can persuade him to, I would go in and with him and get some marriage counseling. Um, if he won't go with you, I'd probably go alone and talk to them about it and see. Because the thing is, as a married couple, your husband should be respectful of that. And like with us, there are times where if, if we don't agree on something financially, our default rule is the more conservative one wins. <laughs> so if 
if it's if we want to spend more, both of us have to be on board, or we don't. And um, if if we want to pay off something, then we lean more towards paying it off. Although we've never really disagreed about that. But a lot of people have problems with their spouses not not seeing the light on that. And I, I think I would really get into the heart matter of it, but not in a angry way. Just in a hey, you know, it really troubles me with this. But like I said. I'm probably not as good as Tara and Jill at explaining that part, but I think that would be a more of a marriage issue if, if he doesn't kind of respect you in that way. Um, cash in the envelope system. Some people do that. I don't know for sure. Um, <laughs> yeah, Tammy, I'm kind of going back and forth between YouTube and Facebook. It's a little hard to do both. Um, Nebo, I don't know if... I don't think Dave does the cash in the envelope system, but maybe he does. We don't really recommend that. For us, it's mostly just the biggest thing is just to say with every purchase, do I need this? And if I think I need it, can I wait till next week to buy it? Because a lot of times if you just keep putting it off, you discover I don't really need it. And that'll save you a ton of money. Uh, how much did we budget for the upcoming trip? We did not actually make a budget, but we thought, no, everybody don't have a heart attack. We thought based on the... It's a long amount of time and the number of people. It could go as high as twenty thousand um, dollars. We are at the moment way under that, so that's good. But since there are five to six of us, there'll be five of us all the trip and six of us for some of the trip. Um, that works out to you know at, at the high end, it would be four thousand dollars a person for two months. I mean, two yeah. Is that right? But right now we're nowhere near that. And that's largely we're considering if we spend a lot on eating out and things that we normally don't do. Um, but it's one thing that in the last year we've been paying a tremendous amount extra on the house each month. So it makes that a lot easier to be able to manage. So ironically, if we had car payments and things, we would not be able to do it at all. So, and we are pretty excited because in addition to us having paid off the house, it's also our 25th anniversary year. And a lot of it is centered around that too. Uh, oh, Jennifer, I'm excited. I've been told I'm going to be a first time grandma and I get an Aldi's and a Hobby Lobby and a Michael's being built near me. Save money to buy yarn and make grandbaby clothes. Holy moly, Jennifer, that's awesome. <laughs> um, we're in Britain, we need to go to the town called Hey on Why? known to have the most booksellers in the world wow um bucket list i'm not really sure well i really mostly wanted to travel more than really anything else so this trip will be a kind of big bucket list type item but i'm not absolutely sure it's it's been so long that we've been focused on things like paying off a lot of stuff that i and with the kids, when we were really busy, I kind of lost track of a lot of those desires. But they're starting to come back. Nancy, Mike, age of your children, uh, 21, BJ's 21, Ellie's 20, uh, David is 15, about to turn 16, and Jack is 9, about to turn 10. And if you guys remember my niece who was living with us before, uh, she is 20 also, but she does not live with us now. She's off at university. So... Um, that's a nice painting, thanks. What got us into YouTube? Okay, so, <laughs> uh, what got us into YouTube? Sorry, I, I saw Mike has the right idea. Good answer, Mike. That's about the marriage thing, I think. <laughs> um, so I was a television producer for 20 years. And um, when we started doing Living on a Dime, uh, I did the television a lot during that time. And then there was a time where we tried to go full-time Living on a Dime and it didn't really work. And I kind of did half that and half television. And eventually when we moved to Colorado, television here pays so little compared to the cost that we just couldn't make it work for me to keep working on TV. So we were doing Living on a Dime and there's a point where we were saying, you know, wow, I've done all this television work. People are saying YouTube is somehow valuable uh, to what we're doing. So let's try and make some videos. And actually, I guess we made those in Kansas still, the first few. Um, but after that, we couldn't see what the benefit was, and then we, when we moved to Colorado, eventually the How to Fold a Fitted Sheet that Jill did started going viral. It really went viral, 
and we realized, well, maybe we should try this again. So we started, we were just experimenting with doing uh, several new videos a week on all different kinds of topics to see what things people wanted to watch. And during that time, I had to give Tar credit if you're out there, dear, you're going to love that I'm actually saying this, that she was right. <laughs> but um, she said, hey, YouTube said they're starting to do live stuff and, and they're inviting us to go live before everybody else does. And I said, who would ever want to do that? Who would want to watch us live? So she said, oh, let's just try it. And I was thinking, oh, I just, I, I, I can't imagine why we'd want to do that. So I have to be honest and say I wasn't right on board at the beginning. But partly because I had been a TV guy, it was already in our minds that we could do it because I had a lot of the technical knowledge. So um, I'm kind of going back right now on the YouTube side. And I'll be over to Facebook again in a second. How's, how, oh, how? How is homeschooling going, finishing up the school year? It's going pretty well. Dave got really behind in the fall because he was having a hard time adjusting to that. And we've been kind of advancing him a lot. He and I have been advancing his work a lot. Uh, we're supposed to leave for our trip on June 22nd, and he'll probably just barely finish all of his classes by then. Although I told him I really would like him to get done by then, but if for some reason we don't, we could have him finish the last little bit when we get back. Although, I had this revelation a couple months ago that maybe we should reconfigure the homeschool. So we, we went through Bob Jones University uh, for the curriculum, which has been really good, but a lot of it is really intensely difficult in ways that I don't think are going to benefit him in what he wants to do in his career. So there's a lot of stress. He's already in, uh, there's a lot of stress on things like, well, there's a chemistry class. I thought chemistry and physics are good things to know, but what he's learning is at the college level already. And I was just thinking, he's not going to be a scientist. And so it's really hard for him and he's really struggling. He's getting great grades and doing well at it, but he spends a lot of time on it. And I was thinking, why are we doing this if he doesn't want to be a scientist? So we're going to revamp school next year, and I think we're going to make a much stronger turn towards business and entrepreneurship, which he's very interested in. So it is going well, and we've learned a lot, and I think next year will be much easier because now that he's kind of got the, the sense of what it's like to have to have that independent responsibility, I think he's working pretty well. Um, I think... I think I'm going to switch over here real quick. Um, I, D, I have no idea about protections for seniors living on fixed incomes. Uh, but that would be a good thing to know. I just I, That's not an area where I would have any knowledge. Let me switch over here back to the Facebook side because I maybe missed some over there for a little bit. Uh, Have fun on your vacation. Thank you, Jacqueline. We really intend to. Funny thing, when Ellie and I, so for those of you who don't know, my daughter, Ellie, who's 20, she and I went to Ireland, Scotland, and England in 2017. And we did a how cheap can we make it and still be awesome. And it turned out to be a really wonderful trip. Um, but then we planned it. We bought our tickets for the flight like six months ahead of time. And we had all this time thinking about it. This time we just came up with the idea and booked it two weeks ago. So in my mind, it's hard. I haven't quite gotten excited yet because this happened so fast. It hasn't been able, we haven't been able to process it, but I think it's going to be awesome. I was looking, we're staying on a number of farms and there's a farm in a kind of remote spot near Loch Lomond National Park in Scotland. Um, and it, I, found a picture of it the other day that I had forgotten that they posted on the listing and I thought, oh, this place is going to be spectacular. So I was getting excited and having a longer period of time in each spot to kind of rest and not feel like you absolutely have to go see everything right now. I think that'll be nice. And the place in Scotland has a, um, uh, the lady that had the listing was talking about herself and her four kids and um, they're on a, it's a working farm. I don't recall what kind of a farm, but uh, her four kids look like they're between kind of maybe a little younger than Dave or than Jack and then almost up to Dave's age. So since their house is right next to the cottage they're renting, I imagine the kids will probably play together, which would be awesome. 
So, <laughs> yay, good recipes from our cookbook. Hey, I'm going to share that, by the way, in case you hear about the cookbook and you don't know. Our, I don't even have it here on camera. We have our Dining on a Dime cookbook, which we usually, we often cook from. It'll save you a ton of money. Usually it saves people groceries. The, the cost of it the first time, people save the cost of it normally, the first time they go out to the store. So, uh, oops. I'm looking through. How do I go about getting my FICO score higher? Uh, so that would be your credit score. And the only reason I would recommend really thinking about it is for if you want to buy a house and you want to get a mortgage, which, anyway, to do that, so BJ, our son, our oldest son, has already kind of been working on that. He's really been brilliant about it. I think um, he he went to buy a car and he had the cash to be, to pay for it and it was only a few thousand dollars, but they offered him financing on it. And he financed it, and the rate he calculated how much it was going to cost for the. He had to keep it financed for six months, and so he financed it even though he had the cash, and he paid a little bit of a premium, which was the interest for those six months. And he talked to somebody, I think, at a bank, who told him pay to pay it in a certain a certain amount of it each month before he pays it off at the end, so that it shows a regular payment thing. I wouldn't recommend getting debt, except that if you're extremely tight under your control and you pay it off almost right away. Uh, the other thing is, there was a time where we added their names to our credit card, BJ and Ellie's names, and it started reporting all of our stuff on their credit, which really helps them, and you may not have that opportunity. But um, something else I would recommend, and I recommended this to BJ before Tara did that, uh, is you can get a secured card where you pretty much don't need any credit for that. And what a secured card is, you have to put five hundred or a thousand dollars in the bank. You can choose how much, but that becomes your credit limit, <laughs> and that money is not available for you to take out of the bank as long as you have that card. And if you, you know, charge it up a certain amount and pay it down each month, you have it. Then uh, that'll help your credit score too. And there's some other things he's doing. I don't recall for sure what, but he has an app on his phone that he can check it regularly, and he does, and he watches it how it goes. Mostly it's um, if you get a balance on there and pay it off regularly, and they see, wow, you're a regular payer. Never, ever be behind on anything. And if for some reason you accidentally get, you miss one, like we were on vacation one time, and they sent a bill that they said um, pay within 10 days, <laughs> and we weren't back within 10 days. But we'd had a lot of history of never having been late on a card, on that card with that company so we called them and said hey you know we were out of town and they said well we'll just since you have nothing bad on your record we'll go ahead and take that off as if it never happened so if you accidentally do it you can call them and ask but if it's like the 10th time they won't <laughs> so those hopefully will be helpful for that but i would mostly do the, the the fico score i didn't realize bj said even to rent you have to have a credit score with pretty good credit in colorado so that would be a good thing. But, but definitely paying your bills on time, never ever being late, is really important. And my hesitation on saying charge up a card and charge and then pay it off is a lot of people are good at the charging it up part. But when the cash is there, the cash goes elsewhere. With us, we would always, if we were doing something like that, we would have the cash. And we would set the cash aside and not use it, but keep the balance long enough for it to show. Check, stop that. <laughs> so... But you have to be definitely disciplined to do that. Okay. Uh, let's see what else we have. After taking your advice about Sam's Club and talking with my husband, we both agree that we're not going to renew our membership. Yeah, a lot of the warehouse stores encourage you to buy more, and we just haven't found it to be that much of a value. Oh, thank you, Ricky. Always good advice, Mike. Thanks for all your family does. Good evening. Good evening. It's been good having you here. <laughs> um, Jack, Jack Frog Parking. Oh. <laughs> Stormy says, Jack Frog Parking. Others will be Toad, T-O-E-D. <laughs> um, yes. Jack Frog Parking only. Others will be Toad. <laughs> yeah, Jack loved it. Stormy. 
Um, Kathy says, keep a spending journal, please. I'm not sure. Are you just saying, um, oh, keep a spending journal on a trip? Yeah, we were going to keep track of exactly how much it costs and what we spend it on. And even though we're not going to be, even though we're going to be doing some things, we're going to be trying to be kind of frugal about it, uh, we will spend money on some things. Oh, I know. Sorry, I got off on the track. Even though we're not going to be working, really, we are going to spend a little bit of time just uh, doing some video so that we can share with all of you how it's going and what we're doing and kind of bring you along in a virtual way. Uh, and when possible, we'll, we plan to go live some, but because it's seven hours in the future there from America, we would have to do like 11.30 p.m. shows, and that's not really going to be likely. So our shows, when we do them live, we'll probably do them in the evening, which will probably be lunchtime in America. So... Brenda, where's my wife? So Tara and Ellie are away um, on a little getaway into the mountains that they had planned actually before we booked our Europe trip. <laughs> and uh, they're just doing that so that Tara can kind of rest and recharge. And Ellie had wanted to go on an adventure. And so they agreed to try to do it together before that. Uh, McDuzzle? Sorry, my, I have the wrong glasses on. Where in Ireland are we going? Uh, we will be... So when we're in Ireland, we will be in Killarney, and we will be on a farm outside of Dingle, actually overlooking Dingle. And those are two of the three favorite places that Ellie and I had last time we went. I did want to go see Donegal, because we haven't been there. But, um, hello, Dave. <laughs> I did want to go see Donegal because we haven't been there, but uh, I think that will have to be a future trip. And probably not as elaborate a future trip, but um, Tara was looking for a nice kind of, she's really been burned out with her chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia. And so we scheduled long weeks so that we, and so she could sort of rest at places. And since Tara and I were already familiar with that, there was, we stayed at another farm on the Dingle Peninsula once before, and it was fantastic. And it was probably the most restful place we've ever been. And also the Killarney National Park, we thought Tara would love to go there and see all the floral. Um, if, for those of you who don't know, they have this tremendous, um, it's not a botanical garden, but it's kind of like one. There are a lot of flowers and things, but there are also flowering bushes and trees, and it's just gorgeous. Uh, and there's an old abbey there that's super quiet and peaceful, especially in the morning. And just a lot of things like that that... Uh, we thought Killarney would be a good, a good spot to go, even though we've been there already, and, and same thing with Dingle. So we're going to stay a week in each of those places, and then there'll be a little bit of time driving between Dublin and there, there and the way back. Um, there is a place in, um, let me forget the name of the place, uh, just south of Dublin a little ways in um, W. I can't think of what it is, where we're staying a couple days in a house where there's an Irish what? family that, no, it's uh, Wexford, I think. I can't remember for sure. But there's an Irish family that got a job in um, the Netherlands, and they were trying to rent their house there, and they seem really nice, and, and we're renting their house for a couple days, too. So um, that's probably more than you were asking for, <laughs> but Mike doesn't do anything with a few number of words. <laughs> um how is Emily doing? She's doing great. She just finished her finals this semester, and she she will be going on a trip with the university to Italy for a couple months to learn abroad. So while we're over in Ireland, Scotland, England, and uh, Norway, she will be in Italy. <laughs> but she's doing really well. We actually, uh, the boys and I invited her and her boyfriend to go hiking with us outside of Boulder uh, what, two weeks ago. Yeah. Oh, you didn't know that? No, I didn't. She's going to Italy to, to do some studying there, but probably also a lot of sightseeing. So, yep. Uh, so she's doing really well. So we went on a hike with her and her boyfriend and the boys and I uh, near Boulder about two weeks ago. And uh, we ended up getting lost. So the hike was a much longer time than before. And, and he seems like a nice guy, too. Yeah, so. we hiked the mountain twice. 
we came, some people advised us that it might be easier to take the other path down the mountain. But what we didn't realize is that path didn't go to where we parked. It yeah, didn't meet it the didn't trail. Go to where we parked. So we ended up having to re-climb the mountain, except we had gone a thousand feet lower than, than we started when we got lost. And so then we ended up having to go a, a thousand feet plus what we had gone before to climb the mountain and climb the mountain the second time. <laughs> So anyway, but anyway, so uh, it was great to kind of hang out with them that day. And we'll probably see her, I imagine we'll see her again before she goes um, on What's her recorded? trip. Hmm? What's recorded? What's recorded? Where are you seeing that? Uh, something that Tara... Oh yeah, something that Mom Or something said. that Mom is saying how to say Tara. <laughs> Let's see. Who all is going on the trip? So it will be Tara and me and uh, Ellie, David, and Jack. So, um, you know, David and Jack are the two that are usually on the show. Ellie is our daughter. Um, and BJ, our oldest son, will not be going, sadly. He got a new job that's really going well for him. And he said he doesn't think he could get more than a week off. So he decided to pass on the trip this time. Leapy, leapy, but it would be fun to bring him, but... Yes. Oh, sure. Go ahead and show them while I look for some more questions here. Look. Zero points one one uh, three four equals hello. <laughs> Nice. Mike, have you checked into the entertainment books for Europe? I'm not familiar with, do you mean just generally books that talk about entertainment or is that a specific thing? Uh, we have not. We actually found out, we've found a lot of information online. I'm actually part of some Facebook groups that uh, postcards from Ireland is one and there's one just called Scotland and they post a lot of pictures and a lot of local people post pictures and things of where they are from day to day. So you can see pictures of what it was like in County Clare today or what it was like at any specific spot. And so a lot of times I see things on there and I make a list of things that would be cool to see. But entertainment, that would be kind of cool. We are going to be in London uh, several different times on this trip. And part of that, uh, Tara and I were hoping to go see Phantom of the Opera, which was um, a which was something that a musical that Tara was just super enthusiastic about when we got married and we went and saw it uh right after we got married here in denver and at that time we really couldn't afford it but we kind of pulled tight on everything to be able to buy tickets and so this would be 25 years later we thought we should do that as kind of a look where we started and look where we are now and how that's worked out really nice so uh let's see how do you check your credit score um, there are a lot of different ways. I'm not familiar with all of them, but you, I would probably Google that to see, but I know for us, uh, we can log into the account at our credit card company and it, I think we can look it up there. BJ has an app on his phone that I think is part of the credit card company. Uh, I would be careful if you do apps to make sure that they come from like the Google Play Store or, or whatever, because some people might offer apps and they might not be legitimate. <laughs> so you don't want to be giving them any of that information. But he, he has an app and he can check it every day. used to be that if it checked more than every so often, it would count against you, but uh, apparently not. If you don't have a credit card, do you still get credit for paying your bills on time? Uh, for bills like your electric bill and your water bill, no. Um, basically, I think for your credit score, the... It has, to, it has to be an organization that reports to credit reporting agencies. So that would be a credit card. Um, there are credit cards like Visa's and MasterCards, but there are also like department store cards. Those, play, those all do that. Um, car loans and house mortgages. Of course, if you have a house mortgage, it means you already have some kind of credit. I would not recommend the car loan thing, although BJ, BJ did that because he, like I said, had the cash to pay it. Um, but I wouldn't recommend that normally. So I don't know for sure if there are other things that count towards a credit score, but pretty much it's credit cards and loans and uh, things like that that get reported. 
Uh, Julie, I thought I'd miss my Sam's card, but I don't open my eyes to how much I was spending there. Yeah, one thing, so this is the same thing I talk about with television and news. Television and news aren't really there to inform you and entertain you. They're there to get you to sit long enough to watch your advertising. And I don't mean that to be down on television necessarily. News, I am down on news because pretty much they they put bad news on because they know that's what sells best. Uh, but when you were saying that about uh, how much, didn't know how much I was spending there, one thing is a lot of places, a lot of the, really all the stores do it, but the warehouse stores are really good at it. Uh, a lot of the stuff about having samplers and getting people excited about things and getting kind of a lot of word out about how good the prices are and stuff is a way to bring you in and then kind of turn you away from the thing you came for towards something that's more expensive or to say, hey, while you're here getting that one cheap thing, why don't you buy uh, 40 gallons of uh, pretzels <laughs> and, and you end up spending more on things that you previously didn't know you needed. So it, in a sense, I mean, I'm not faulting them for trying to sell things and, and you know, make money at their business. But for you, the consumer, <clears throat> it's helpful to know that they're not... Their purpose is not their being there to save you money. Their purpose is there to figure out how they can increase their income as much as possible. So that's brilliant that you figured out that you got rid of the card and now you realize you were spending too much there. We actually had, it's funny because we found other things like that. This is a little bit different story, but cable. We were kind of borderline on cable when it costs a lot less than it costs now. And... Uh, they were showing some really inappropriate videos, Girls Gone Wild and stuff like that, uh, commercials on Saturday in the late morning when the kids were watching kids' shows. And we realized that. We're thinking, okay, this has to go. So we called them and cut it right then. But we realized later, we didn't really miss it. And now uh, we had Netflix for a while. We don't have Netflix anymore. We have Amazon Prime. Uh, we get movies and videos from the library and we watch things on YouTube and we never run out of, we, we don't watch that much, but we never run out with what we have. And occasionally we go to family members' houses where they have cable and we're just shocked by how oppressively inundating all the commercials are. Because I remember when we first got cable, part of the allure of cable was if you get cable, there aren't any commercials. <laughs> but now that we see having been away from it so long it's really nice to not have that so but just there are a lot of things where you think wow i really need this but it's interesting if you try and get rid of it for a while you might find that you don't and that's where i i was talking about this earlier but a lot of times if you think uh we need this let's go buy it i when we were in our super strict debt payoff mode i would ask myself for almost every spending everything i spent do I need this? And if I'd say yeah, if I say no, wouldn't buy it. And if I said yes, I would say, maybe I don't need it till next Friday. And then when next Friday came, if it wasn't seeming super urgent, but I still felt like I needed it, I would think, maybe I'll wait a little bit longer and see how it goes. And a lot of times just delaying like that, it's amazing how much money you can save from just delaying buying things. Uh, oops. Let's see. It's weird hearing someone talk about going on a trip to Europe in a program called Living One Time. Yes, <clears throat> Rosalind. Actually, there's a really good reason why. Well, first of all, um, much like uh, we, so I was trying to think of a way to say. Okay, we have not gone on almost any vacations in the 25 years we've been married, but. The purpose of living on a dime is not to be poor all your life and not to never do anything. And the purpose is to uh, spend very little on all the things that you don't really need and put all that effort into the things that are important to you. Um, but if everything is important to you, you're always going to be poor. So what we figured out, we pretty much have all this time just we put money on things like paying off our house, which we have, so we have no credit card debt, no house payment. Um, and it's 
really something we would love to do to be able to all travel together and do something really fun like that. And so we thought this is a good opportunity to explain to people because we've had people criticize us over the years. Like when we sold our house in Kansas, it was $135,000. It was 2,400 square foot house on two acres. It was really beautiful. We had pictures of it. And one lady just said, well, you sure live in an awfully nice house for someone who's so cheap. We're thinking, you totally don't understand. Like we're not cheap. We're spending less on things that really don't matter to us five minutes after we spend the money and instead putting money on things that really are important to us, like that house. Now that we have absolutely no debt and no mortgage, um, and again, like I said, we've traveled almost not at all, we thought we're going to take the money we've been paying extra on our house to get it paid off. Uh, it'd be the money that we would have paid extra for the next several months. And we're gonna go on a nice trip together. And part of the reason we're doing that is to say, you know, to live frugally doesn't mean you have to give up everything and constantly be pinching pennies at the very tight, tightest level. But I can tell you that we're going to go on this trip and we're going to come back. And when we come back, we're still not going to get car payments. We're still not going to buy lots of things that we don't need. We're not going to buy lots of personal electronics and personal property, um, even though our house will still be paid off and we still have no debt. Uh, so it may sound strange, but I think part of the message we want to teach people is this isn't necessarily, it's not forever that you have to feel like I can't spend money. And it's not really that I can't, because we also know people who they got out of debt, they paid off their house, they have a lot of money, and they hang paper towels on the clothesline. <laughs> and I'm thinking, okay, I would probably use rags instead of paper towels, but you kind of lose the point of it if the purpose of, of it is to just stockpile cash. The purpose should be, we're gonna save money continuously, but every now and then when something is really important to us, we're gonna do it. So in the old days with our living on a dime, we wouldn't, if the car broke down, we would say, is this component really worth fixing? And we got to a point finally where you know, if, if you don't fix the window that doesn't roll down and you don't fix the air conditioning, eventually everything just falls apart. And we finally realized, wow, we really can't let certain things fail unless we're going to sell this car. And so, um, so we've gotten to the point where we're free to say, um, I'm going to go ahead and fix that because it needs it. So in the same way, this trip is part of that. So, yay. <laughs> yeah. It's good to enjoy yourself, but there are people, most families that we talk to here in Colorado spend the same amount we're going to spend for two months in Europe for five to six people uh, to take four of them to Disney for one week. So, so that's how Living on a Dime works into that. So, all right, let's see. I'm going to switch back over to the YouTube side, I think. Yes, Jack? Uh, somebody might have asked about classics. I'm sorry, we are sold out of them. Classic Dining on a Dime cookbooks. Oh, let me share that link, by the way, for the... Uh, we're out of the classic Dining on a Dime, but we still do have the 20th anniversary ones. And I will share that link if you don't have it yet. With this, um, We've been getting a lot of people lately telling us how they put off getting our cookbook for a long time. And then once they finally got it, they were thinking, wow, I saved so much, I regret not buying it earlier. But a lot of people will tell us that um, they save more the first time they go to the store than the total cost of the book, even when it's not on sale. So I think that's it's a blessing to us to hear that people are finding it to be useful because it has been a lot of work. But Darcy, so excited for you and your family. Life goes by. You and Tara have worked hard to get to where you are. Bless you and in your family. Thank you very much. Yes, we will have a wonderful time. And by the way, Part of why we're going longer, we're over time? Yeah, that's fine. Minutes. So what are you saying? Do I have an appointment? Yes. Oh, what? Tell oh, tell something. Did you know that 1 plus 9 plus 8 equals 1? 1 plus 9 plus 8 equals 1. Yeah. I, I don't, I did not know that. How does that work? Look at the beginning of each letter. I mean, look at the um, beginning letter of each number. 
the beginning of the letter of 1 is O, the beginning of 9 is N, the beginning of 8 is E. Oh, one. one. <laughs> That's pretty brilliant, Jack. <laughs> wow, family care coaching. Thoughts on social media. Do you think you really need to be on Facebook, Instagram to get a new business going? Um, depends on what kind of business it is. Um, if it's a local business, it's good to have something where people can find you if they're looking for you. But with Facebook and Instagram and YouTube, if you don't post a lot of stuff, they won't show it to anybody. So uh, we have a friend in town or nearby who was uh, trying to do dog training, and she was pretty frustrated with it. She was asking about the social media, but I was saying uh, you really have to be able to post a lot for people to see anything that you post. So I, I'm not sure I would focus on the Facebook or Instagram as much. I would do, I probably would have a, just enough of a presence there that if they want to contact you, they can. Um, I would focus more on your website and making sure it has a lot of useful information for what you're doing. And I probably would put some videos on YouTube if you're, depending on what your business is, uh, well, you say coaching. So I'd probably do some YouTube things that tease what you're doing share some useful information, but if they want more, then they can contact you and get that because video is a really good way of explaining to people what your business does. So um, I didn't realize we're over time, I see. Um, yeah, No Life, the prepaid cards, I'm not sure, but based on the conversation, it looks like um, the prepaid cards at Walmart, credit cards, they're, they're good for being able to use a credit card when you don't have one. If there's a reason you might need to, not all of them will work for buying things online, but they will not affect your credit score at all. They won't help you because they're basically a cash card. They're like gift cards, but they're accepted where Visa and MasterCard are accepted. Um, so, although Jennifer is saying something there, if the, she might be talking about another kind of prepaid card, or like I said, um, you can do a secured credit card through a bank where you have money in a bank account that you can't touch, and that becomes the credit limit on the card. So, mostly I wouldn't. <laughs> um, mostly I wouldn't. Um, I wouldn't want the credit except for buying a house, and if you have to rent a house, renting a house, or uh, if there's something else you might have to rent. Hi, Mike. Can you take any precautions against falling out the roof? Uh, I'm trying to think. I feel like this is a reference to something from recently, and I can't think of what. <laughs> I do. I'm always careful about that. But there's a specific thing that I think you're referring to, and I can't remember what it is. <laughs> uh, have we seen a picture of Heidi, or has she been in a video? Uh, Jana, Heidi, um, we have some videos on our YouTube channel. And if you go to uh, youtube.com forward slash living on a dime, or just type in living on a dime on YouTube, there, um, there's a series that Tara and Heidi did called Side Hustles. I think we actually have in our playlists on YouTube, uh, one of them is Side Hustles, which is basically side jobs to make extra money. And Tara and Heidi did that together. And Heidi will be on some other stuff as soon as well. So uh, we're kind of publishing videos with Tara interviewing Jill and then Tara interviewing Heidi. So... <laughs> All right. Let's see. Yes? What? Yes? Uh, New York City Homestead question. Now I finally got the Dying on a Dying book. What should I focus on first? So I'm thinking, are you meaning what recipe should you make first? Because I think my favorite is probably the chicken fried steak. <laughs> But if you're talking about paying off debt or something, um, maybe ask your question uh, uh, more particularly on that. So, uh, but I love things like the chicken fried steak, the maple glazed chicken, or honey baked chicken and maple glazed chicken are similar, but the honey baked chicken is our number one most popular recipe. Um, what else, Jack? The uh, cheeseburger rolls, the kids love those. Um, and also, Tara, it's okay. Um, Tara, 
um, made beef stroganoff for me when we first, on our second date. And it was delish. And it's in the cookbook as well. That's a really good one. There's a lot of things. You can't really go wrong with virtually anything that's in there, with really anything that's in there. So um, let me see, Jack. Okay, sorry, uh, I see what you're saying. Uh, hold on for a second, just a second, guys. All right. Okay, thank you, Jack. Sorry, I misunderstood what you're saying. Uh, what a great relationship you have with your niece. Yeah, it's um, it's kind of nice to see her on hikes and things. And I've been trying to remember, she needs a little more advance notice because she doesn't live in the same city as us. But she's close enough that we can do that. What do you think about the minimalist movement? I think you said before that Ellie is one. Yes. Ellie decided to be minimalist at one point, and she got rid of almost everything she owned. I I think she was a little bit intense about it, and she's, I think she's gathered back a few things. But in general, I think, especially if you live in the United States, most people have way too much stuff. And the stuff causes a lot of stress. It causes uh, you to spend a lot more money maintaining the stuff and thinking about the stuff and buying stuff that you don't usually use. So I think in that sense, minimalist is great. I would be a little careful about not overdoing it, but really most of us can live with a lot less than we have. I think Ellie had gotten to where she had no decorations on her walls and she got rid of almost all the little personal items that she had and everything. And I don't think she really seriously regretted it, but there were a few things that might've been better if she hadn't gotten rid of them, so like her, uh, some of her Captain America stuff. I think she later regretted that she didn't still have it. So, uh, wow. Have you ever visited Canada or would you ever consider visiting? We have not, but we would love to visit there. And we actually had contemplated going this summer before we had the opportunity to go overseas. Uh, by the way, for people asking questions about us traveling, another thing about us traveling is um, some of these things we, we love to kind of bring everybody along and put it on video and stuff. And so because of that, uh, sometimes the benefit for the, our business in just getting a lot of excitement about seeing what we're doing makes it not really cost us anything. So in a sense, not only is it that we're, we have the goal of saving money on things that we don't need so that we can afford the things that are really important to us. In our case, those things may not end up costing us anything in the end. Like Tara and Ellie went on a road trip a few years ago uh, because at the time we were thinking of moving out of Colorado and Tara was just going to see what kind of places we might consider moving to and they ended up doing a lot of videos along the way and stuff like that and in the end the income from the videos paid more than double what the trip cost us so that's something else that uh, I didn't uh, where's Tara she is out of town with Ellie at an undisclosed location for rest and relaxation. They will be back on Monday. Um, they missed Wednesday's show. Today's just a free, a free the extra show. <laughs> so, uh, but they're having a good time sitting in hot springs and sitting in the pool and sitting in a hotel and not doing a lot, which is awesome. Plants and passion. Hi fam, love your stuff. Just an etiquette tip. Uh, they refer to our country as the States. Many refer to America as the continent. I did not know that part. I've heard the States. Actually, I think it's funny that the way that people say, um, uh, I think it's, um, I, I love the way that people say things that are a little different, so yay. Okay, let's see. Um, now I'm looking back on the YouTube, Facebook side because I've been kind of away from it for a little bit. I can't order the old classic books from the website. So Rhonda, we unfortunately don't have any more of the classic books. We had, a, we had a big sale on them and we thought we sold out and then we found a whole other pallet of them. So we had another sale, but now we're absolutely sure we're out. So we still have the 20th anniversary ones and we're probably, I don't know when we will, but we occasionally have sales on them, but not nearly as much as the sales on the other one because we were clearing those out. Um, <laughs> yeah. Curious. Oh, so Denise is referring to the lady that was criticizing us for selling our house in Kansas. Um, curious where that lady is now that said that you're cheap, probably in so much debt. We have found a lot of people that 
um, are critical or kind of trollish about that are totally maxed. And I feel bad for them, really, because it, it's, it's a psychological difficult thing to get over, but kind of being careful will make you rich in the end. Um, no, uh, Rhonda, the extra pellet, we sold those already. We had, a, um, we had a, another clearance sale two weeks ago. So sorry about that. Okay, let's see. I don't understand people that go to the Dollar Tree every day. How much do you need? I only go when I need something. That, I would say I would never go shopping to a store unless you have a specific motive. Like, I need this. And I would go. It's one thing that I think I know a lot of. It seems like women are more the types to want to just shop to shop. Not all women. But, but men in general... Um, I think are more likely to only go in for something specific. And I know for me, that's been the case. And I do think that it's helpful to avoid the store entirely unless you have a specific thing you know you need. Um, so let's see. <laughs> the meatloaf is the only recipe I use now, the best. I forgot, that's one that's really, really good. Where are we moving? We are currently not uh, we're not going to move right now, but we would like to move somewhere else near our current area in Colorado. There was a time where we were looking out of state, but I really didn't feel too good about that, and we couldn't find a place that we that we particularly felt a desire or a pull to go to. So, so we're kind of looking. Uh, there's some areas around here we're keeping an eye on near us in Colorado that are close enough where Jack could probably still go to the same school. Um, but maybe some of them are a little further away from the mountains or further away from some other things, but uh, places that have a little bit more ground. And some of them have extra buildings that we could use to Airbnb. Some don't, and we could build them if we needed to in the areas where we're looking, so. Um, yeah. You're trying to sell on 39 on eBay and Amazon. Are you, are you talking about the dining on a dime? Because I noticed there are people trying to sell our cookbook on Amazon and eBay and used ones, and they're selling them for double what we sell them for new. So, yeah, Tar says $24 on our site. So it's $24.95 for the 20th anniversary edition on our site. I'll share that link again. Sorry you missed that uh, classic sale, but uh, the 20th anniversary is the classic, but it has 100 extra pages and 28 more recipes and pictures and um, cards and things like that. Yes, nice week too. Man's talking about you? Yeah. Um, Tina, am I still thinking of doing a Bible study? Yes, although up to now what we've kind of done is we've been finding a lot of people are liking to ask questions and it seems like there's sort of a lack of space or a lack of people that are actually willing to answer questions live. So... We're kind of doing that some in the question and answer show. So if you have a question, go ahead and ask. Um, as far as a formal Bible study, I thought about doing that. Although a lot of people, I know a lot of people that are doing that. And um, if the question and answer thing is still something that's really popular with people, we might lean more in that direction. But I think I might kind of practice um, <laughs> if... Uh, We'll probably do the question and answers, and I might think of some topics and do some just to see how everybody likes them. Some of those might be easier not live, so might kind of do a little experimenting. I was kind of thinking of doing that with Fridays since we don't normally have a show on Friday, uh, but probably between now and our trip, I might do some question and answer ones, and then after the trip, experiment with some other stuff and see. A.K. Doss, Jill, that grandson is so gorgeous. God bless your family with beautiful kids. Yes, I totally agree. Um, let's see. Grandma's so happy home said, that's why I love when we homeschool. We can have a curriculum match the child. Our Christian homeschool store always says, look at your child and match what their interest. Yes, so that's one thing we're really thoughtful about that we like better with the homeschooling than regular school 
um, is that the regular school is kind of teaching all the kids kind of in one direction, how to be successful in a certain way. And um, that can be good if that's the kind of thing they want to do. But a lot of we've discovered that a lot of the things are not necessarily beneficial with the kids when they have a, a specific direction where they, they're really good, but it doesn't follow that. And also, like with us, we don't value regular jobs as much as we value entrepreneurship, and they've kind of picked that up from us. Yes? There was a weird beep noise. Yes. It scares me. Um, do you ever experience pressure to invest in retirement versus paying off your mortgage? Our thinking was, I mean, different people might, uh, different people might feel differently about this, but our thinking is to pay off the house and get it completely paid off before we focus a lot on the retirement because there are probably benefits to investing some as you go, but in our case, um, we'd like to pay off the house first so we know that that's totally clear. And then our investing would probably be different than a lot of people because rather than putting money in a lot of uh, accounts that make smaller amounts of interest, I'd rather do something like real estate investing where the... Uh, the income is greater on that investment. It, it's tricky. I mean, it requires some more attention to the business, though. It's not the kind of thing. One thing about a lot of the retirement plans is you can just put that money away and hopefully trust other people to do it, and you get a return. It's not as tremendous. But in our case, I would rather invest in things that you have to pay more attention to it and be a little more involved, but the return is much higher. Jack, can you see if you can find Buster? made a face that was hilarious. That scared <laughs> um, can you see if you can find Buster? They're asking to him again. Um, Lisa, I don't buy anything unless I need it. I don't buy the cheapest or the most expensive, but somewhere in the middle. I also buy at the thrift store first. Yeah, we don't buy anything unless we need it. Um, we tend to lean towards a lower price, but some things it's worth paying a little more for. Like, I think we, we ended up buying a bed for BJ that was the dirt cheapest one they had and had a warranty, but it, it completely disintegrated recently. And he had to go in and trade it on the warranty. But in the meantime, upgraded to a much nicer one. And sometimes in things especially like that, cheap isn't always the best. Buster, come here. He cannot hear as much, so he hears the whistling more than anything else. Um, good night, Jennifer. Does... Okay, Buster, where are you? Buster, oh, I'm sorry. Look up here, guy. Here, Hello. pet him, but when you pet him, kind of kind of gently lift his head up a little so he looks at the camera. Buster! Here, kind of put your hand under his neck and rub his neck and then just kind of gently lift his head up a little. He likes that. Yeah. Well, Jack is having a hard time understanding what I'm saying. How to do that? <laughs> okay. But anyway, that's Buster. Yes. Um, when is your new book going to come out? We're hoping we can do it by Christmas, but um, we're not really sure. How uh, we're? I, Tara thought we weren't going to be able to get out by Christmas. Then she realized it wasn't in as bad a shape as she thought. Uh, a little closer to being done, so we might still be able to do it, but we're not really sure. We're hoping for Christmas, but it might end up being Mother's Day. Well, the big, the big reveal might be Mother's Day. It's possible we could sell it slightly before that, but we're hoping for Christmas. How are we going to handle book sales while we're out of the country? So we're not going to have any big markdown sales while we're gone, because those are the ones that usually have a tremendous amount of biz of work to do and a lot of stuff like that. We are going to while we're gone, we'll we have somebody set up who's going to come over and ship for us, so the books will still ship out. Uh, that sell normally but that time of the year in the summer is our usually our slowest time of the year so it was a perfect time for us to plan this trip so at our very slowest time of the year we'll be out and what we'll be doing is probably something a lot of people want to see so it might actually make us busier uh, so we're going to have we have somebody arranged already to come ship books for us yes So you, I'll have you say that in just a second. Hold on just a second. So anyway, um, yeah, so we have somebody that's going to come over and ship books for us. Um, 
and they'll still go out regularly, but it's the slow time of year, so that's not too much. And we have our assistants like Heidi and Janelle um, that are going to be taking over a few other things that Tara and I uh, sometimes do on the business so that we have absolutely nothing to do, hopefully, except um, some video as we go to keep everybody um, uh, uh, advised aware of what we're doing. We are going to do some things. We'll do some things where we take the camera around and just uh, shoot a little bit of what we're doing through the day and then edit it and put it online. Uh, a few things, don't mess with that yet, where we, um, where we will do them live. We're also planning to do things like go into the store and see what kind of stuff they have in the store that we don't have here. And I think Tara wants to do some experimenting with how would I save money in another country when I only have one week so I can't really stockpile stuff, but what's the best way to do that? So it'll be interesting. Jack, come here and say what you were going to say. Say what I was going to say? Yeah. Oh. Uh, Niha, there will, be a, um, there will be a live show on Monday, yes. I don't have any idea what it's about yet, but Tara will be back by then. So. Um, yeah, if you, if you have some sort of product, you should sell it for less than it costs to make Because then you're going to lose money. Yeah. Jack's actually been pretty brilliant at laying out plans for businesses and things. And I'm glad at, at the age of nine, he's really thinking, okay, so if my cost is this, then how much do I have to charge in order to be able to sell it? Because there are lots of expenses in the business that aren't just the cost of actually buying the books from the printer and then selling them. And so thinking about all that is really important if your business is going to be successful. And it's really cool that he's nine and he keeps coming in with these drawings of layouts of how this all works and how he's going to price his items based on this. And he doesn't even have a product, but he still is really brilliant at thinking about that. I'm just having fun thinking about it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Chi, what would you recommend for a couple who currently live in an apartment and want to buy or move into a house? How much to save when to do it? So what I would probably do... I don't know how expensive your apartment is. What I would do is, um, I would, as much as possible, not spend any money on anything except, I would not spend any money on anything except the minimum things that you really need and bank a whole lot of money to put into a down payment for the house. And depending on where you live, it could be more or less difficult. But I would, if your income is really low, I would really scale back to the absolute bare minimum of what you need. Um, if your income is a little higher, you might not need to cut back that much. But I would bank absolutely as much money as you can to put in a down payment. Um, I think in America right now, I think you can get loans for something like as little as a 3% down payment. I think 20% is a lot better. So I would recommend that you uh, save absolutely as much as you can and try to get to the 20% mark and then buy a house. If you're in a place where the prices just go up dramatically and they never come down, it might be worth getting in at 3%, but uh, I would also buy the, the kind of the smallest house that fits your needs and pay it off. And then if you want to get something more expensive, you'll have a lot less mortgage and you'll be able to pay it off faster. So uh, our son right now, BJ, our oldest, He's working a job that suddenly is paying a lot more than he's ever made before. And so he's he's still living on the small amount. I mean, he's, he's still in our house, although he's getting ready to move, he says. Um, but he's been, while he's here, he's been spending the absolute minimum that he was spending, that he's been spending all along that he's, since he's been here. And he's putting every other dollar into that money for his house. And I would recommend doing that. I would recommend if the, the kind of tighter you can pull it, the faster you'll get that down payment. And I would, as soon as you can get 20%, I will, and you find a house that's going to work really well, I would do it. And I, I certainly, I personally would rather be in the house as soon as possible. Here in, in some places we've lived, the rents were a lot less than the mortgage, so I would stay renting longer if that were the case. But where we are here, um, rents are way higher than mortgage for the same amount of space. So let's see. Wow, I realize we've been on a long time, so I may, um, 
I may be going here soon, but it seems like there are a lot of questions, so I might stick around a little bit longer. Uh, no life. Being young is hard to get a regular checking account. That's why I'm going around with prepaid debit cards. So, actually, um, I don't know if there's a restriction on that. We have, cause you, you mentioned about your mom one time in the past, but for us, we were able to get the kids into a high school checking account. And that was that came with a debit card that was limited, so you couldn't overdraft it, and, which is great because it's great practice without getting yourself in a debt or bouncing anything. And there were no fees for that um, that high school account. If for some reason there's not a really good way to work with parents, I think the bank would allow. Even in high school, they might still. Allow, we have Chase Bank here in Colorado, but I know we've used a lot of other banks that would do that too. Um, but I think I'm not aware of a restriction on having the account unless they've changed that rule. When I was 16, I had a checking account, although they may have changed that to be 18 uh, because of some fraud things. So I'm not really sure. I would contact your bank, though, and just say, hey, I'm younger and I would really like to have an account because I'm you know, being responsible and I've got all this stuff. Uh, what would be the best way to do that? Just realize this computer isn't plugged in. <laughs> So, um, all right. So hopefully that helps. The prepaid debit card is helpful, but it's not really helpful to building any credit. It's just a way to take cash and do that. Um, I really think you could get a regular checking account. The one thing I would say, the high school accounts are better because there's no fees. If you go in for a regular bank account, a lot of times they want to charge you a monthly fee, and we never pay those fees. And Ellie... Uh, I think Ellie's account is still a high school account, even though she's not in high school now. So she was saying, I need to go probably to the bank and switch that over. But for the uh, regular accounts, you have to have a minimum balance of a certain amount before there are no fees, which to me is kind of counterintuitive. But, um, but I think our bank, I want to say you have to have $1,500 or something in the account all the time, and then they won't charge you a fee. So we kind of saved up to get that in there uh, and then um, we kind of saved up to get that amount in there and ever since then we just never touched that money so let's see did I miss anything here frugal rocks yes uh, <laughs> I'm looking for any questions I might not have gotten to when is the Australian tour? Amy, we really want to come see you too. And you know what's funny is we kept telling Turid in uh, Norway, we'd love to come see you sometime. We'd love to come see you sometime. And we were, on this trip, we're going to be close enough. We're thinking, why not now? So I'm sure that Australia and New Zealand will be on. I know they're not real close to each other, but they're a lot closer than the rest of us up here. So uh, I think those will be on a, a future tour, hopefully not too far in the future. And particularly, we'd love to come to Perth and see you. So, um, Kelly, I would love to hear pointers on a self-employed irregular income. Okay, a couple things I would say about that. I love the self-employed thing. Um, it has its challenges. One thing I would say, if you're not self-employed and you start something, um, I would, and from the very beginning, I would try to separate your things like your email from the business email because one of the downsides of being self-employed is you feel really responsible for it and it's hard to turn it off when you check your email at 11 o'clock at night and it's a business thing and it seems like it needs your attention now. So, um, but the thing about the business, I would recommend if you don't have any idea what you want to do, I would recommend starting with something like, um, if you go to our YouTube channel, Living on a Dime, and look through the playlists and find the one that side hustles with Heidi. Heidi has some brilliant ideas about side jobs to do. And it's, it's more about the thinking of how business works than about what specifically you're doing. But I would also say um, you need to give it time to grow. So some people will say, I want to start something, I'm going to quit my other thing right away, and I wouldn't. But the other thing is that uh, sometimes it's not as important what it is you're doing for your business, but as how you're going to get the word out to the people who would be your customers. So you want to find something that is solving somebody's problem. 
and something that they're going to be happy that that what you're doing solves their problem. But then you have to do what's called marketing, which is all kinds of things to make them aware that you exist. And the marketing, we've discovered the marketing is almost all of a business. So the part where you're explaining why your product is helpful to them is the greatest part of it. Um, but it's important if you don't have an idea what you're doing yet to choose something that people say do your passion. And I would say, if your passion is, you know, painting rocks, maybe you shouldn't do your passion. <laughs> but what's kind of good to do is make a list of a lot of things that you're passionate about and then a, a list of things that are profitable and find out how do those kind of come together. Because it could be something, I don't love doing it every day, but I like it most of the time. It's not my number one hobby because I don't want to ruin my number one hobby by making it business. And find out something that you have an interest in that would solve a problem for a lot of people. And that's probably the best way to get started on doing an independent business. But I would do it on the side. I would experiment a lot. I would try to find other people who've already done what you're trying to do and learn from them. Um, if, if any of you out there want to create something from scratch, like an internet type thing, it's so much easier than I ever thought it was, especially if you don't need it to make a tremendous amount of money right up front. Um, but there's a website, Smart Passive Income, from Pat Flynn. He, he's, he's a brilliant guy. Uh, he was an architect that lost his job and decided, I want to be an entrepreneur and created this. But he has a podcast that's really great where he interviews a lot of people who are successful at all kinds of entrepreneurial independent businesses. And if you listen to the podcast, you might think, I don't really care to be an app developer or a, there are just all kinds of... He, he interviews people with all the whole spectrum of businesses. But what's cool is when you listen to them enough, you start recognizing patterns in the thought process. And you learn to think like an entrepreneur. And that that's really where, that's what will make you successful doing an independent business. And it's also really important to always tell people what the benefits are to them, not just the features of your product. Um, and like I said, it's better to make something that solves a problem for people intentionally than to create something and then try to find people that need it. If you know who needs it already, and then you create exactly what they need, that's going to be a much more successful business. But um, if that's what you're saying, actually, now that I think about it, you say self-employed or regular business income, you might be meaning like if you're a, a roofer and you only roof part of the year or a painter. Those things, it's more about learning how to flex cash flow. So you make a huge amount of money one month and you're like, yay, but then you have to remember these three months of the year, we absolutely know we're not going to get paid. So we need to save that aside so that when those slow months come, we're not desperate and we, instead of living super high on the hog when there's a lot of money, to take that money and hold it back and, and create a buffer account. Because that's one thing with being self-employed is income tends to go up and down a lot. And you'll start to learn eventually, wow, this time of year we're usually just really killing it with the business and this time of the year we're never making anything and and so what we've done with those times is when things are really, really good, we try to save a lot of that aside. And then, like I said, our summer tends to be our super slow months. And we learned we need to set up a, enough aside that we know that during those months, we're going to have to spend this much for our regular bills and no money's coming in. So, I mean, it's a little different now. Some money's still coming in. It used to be absolutely none. And trying to just learn to ride that wave is a little bit of a challenge, but once you figure it out, it life becomes so much easier. So, wow, I guess Mike is Mr. Chatty tonight. Uh, how do you use the pantry that's in Tar's book? Do you just go out and buy everything on the list, keeping your pantry? Um, Tar would be better at answering this question than me, but she tends to keep certain things in the pantry all the time. Um, other things she only... It might be on the list, but she might not buy it if we don't use it a lot. But most of the stuff on the list is things like flour and sugar, peaches. Uh, can like our kids love canned peaches and um, some other things like that. Certain cereals. She'll keep that stuff stocked all the time because we use it. Baking items, a lot of that stuff. Um, I don't remember what's on the pantry list, but generally... 
she if we didn't if we were starting over from scratch we wouldn't just go spend five hundred dollars on the pantry list what we would do is say these are the things we need in the pantry and we would look for really great sales and when they are on a really great sale we would uh, go buy those specific things and keep doing that with all the different things until the pantry is fully stocked and then after that it's mostly just keeping it stocked things like i said flour and sugar and pasta and rice and peanut butter and the canned peaches that the kids love and um, just things like that we tend to just keep an eye out for sales and always buy it when it's on sale and we never run out of the stock in the pantry so Jacqueline I missed the Friday night shows you guys should bring them back maybe just chatting so you don't have to worry about cooking yeah I I was thinking about coming back and doing more of the Friday shows it's kind of nice to not have it officially on the schedule though because when we had Monday, Wednesday, Friday shows, we would never get done till seven or so on Friday night. And then after we break everything down, it would be even later. Um, and that was difficult to do every Friday, but it's kind of nice to have always Monday and Wednesday, but Friday sometimes, because then some Fridays we can uh, go out for date night or do something different like that. But I'm really glad you like them. So let's see. Uh, how much do you have for an emergency fund? Um, we we keep uh, trying to think. And uh, we keep about six months' income in the emergency fund, and we kind of split it up in different accounts. But uh, like for instance. We have the bulk of it in one account, but then in our regular checking account, I keep an extra thousand dollars in there all the time, uh, which is not nearly six months. The majority of it, like I said, is in one account, but we keep a little bit of it in places like uh, in our regular checking account. We keep a buffer that we never go below so that if we make a mistake on our spending, we don't ever overdraft the account. And we do the same thing with the business, except the business, we always keep enough in there to operate uh, to operate the business for a lot of months of no income and to buy new orders of books which often cost us a lot like it costs us um, ten to twelve thousand dollars to buy a new order of books so if we run out of books and we need to order some more so that books are still available for you to buy in the store. It's about ten to twelve thousand dollars for that, and we have to be able to come up with that in cash right now. So we always have enough to operate the business, plus at least one order of books in that account, and then we have a separate family account where um, we generally keep about six months. So it's good. To, it's definitely good to do that. Although if you have a lot of debt, I would keep a smaller emergency fund. I would keep some, so you're not constantly recharging things to deal with uneven things. But that thing I was talking about about business works the same with personal. A lot of people say, man, you know, I, I really have trouble with my budget because unexpected things happen, and each time it seems like every month an unexpected thing happens. Well, we the way we dealt with that is we said, hmm, there's $300 worth of unexpected things every month. Therefore, we now have a budget item for unexpected things, and we just plan on that. We don't really budget that much, but there was a time where we were kind of drawing out budgets more so people could see. But when we started thinking about having a little bit of extra money available all the time so we never have to charge anything again when there's something unusual, and like I said, if unusual things happen all the time, then they need to be budgeted in as a regular expense that you just don't yet know what it is. So, um, <laughs> all right, let me switch over here real quick to Facebook again. Wow, guys, a lot of questions tonight. I wasn't expecting that. I totally forgot. Uh, Buster, we do buy dog food for him. Oh, man, I did not know you were coming to be with Buster for a couple weeks. He'll probably appreciate that. <laughs> Poor guy. Uh, he's been a little bit off his balance with Tara and Ellie both being gone because he usually walks around following one of them all day long and he's kind of been a little confused if that should be David or me. Thank you for the Q&A. Thank you, Tina. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, 
Yes, Joe will spoil Buster so much, but that's all right. Great show today. Thank you, Betty. I think Jack is going to be an engineer. Yeah, Jack definitely has a very science and engineering type mindset, and he's constantly thinking about all this stuff. Uh, and he was chosen, I think, how many kids from the school got chosen for that thing at, at the end? Um, eight. Eight kids at your school? Yeah, eight. So eight kids. One for each grade. So one kid for each grade at his school got chosen to do this, it's uh, like, what is it called? Uh, it's an innovation academy at IBM. Yeah, so it's an innovation academy, which is a couple weeks summer program at, at IBM near us. And so he's going to do that before our trip. Well, it's not actually at IBM. First day is, but um, they have it in another location. Is at a, in a so. That's awesome. But yeah. But I think they noticed at school. I think there's only 120 people in the state. Wow. Maybe, sure. They noticed at his school that that's. We'll have to track it down after the show. They noticed at the school that. Um, oh hey, Jonathan. Good that you checked in for a few minutes. <laughs> Jonathan. Uh, Florida Singularity is on and he's uh, out of town right now from where he usually lives so that's kind of cool um, yeah so anyway they recognize that the school that Jack has that skill and they've really been trying to promote that and in fact next year they also um, had a limited number of spaces for a robotics club they were trying to start and uh, they were really excited that he, he got into that and he was just super pumped about he, he was thinking there's only so many spaces. Dad, can you sign up for tonight? And he was really... Yeah, my, really wish, my teacher, though, um, she was like... Yeah, uh, she said something about... Uh, what, um, afterwards, I was um, like, she said, Oh, yeah, you're... And I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, yeah, that's going to be fun. Yay. Oh, thank you, Marie. I have so much respect for you and Tara. You have your finances in excellent shape. I'm 68, still haven't gotten ourselves together yet. I've learned a lot here, though. You know, it's never too late to learn. That's what I would say. And part of our thinking is um, trying to learn from other people is really helpful. In some sense, we a lot of what we teach our kids is based on the fact that... Um, well, you know, of course, you guys, a lot of you are familiar with the Penny Pinch and Mama series, and you know Tara and Jill, uh, when Tara grew up, they didn't have a lot of money. My family, um, we never knew what the financial situation was of our parents. They, they just wouldn't share anything. And so as soon as I was in college and somebody said, you deserve it, you need to treat yourself, I thought, I do, because I'm important, because I was such a fool back then. <laughs> but what I realized is... Um, uh, the not having that information is not good. So we, our kids pretty much know all of our financial stuff and all of our decisions. And when we spend a lot of money on something, they know. And they know how much and why and where it came from. And I think it's really good for that. So anyway. All right. Well, I'm probably going to wrap it here in a minute, but I'm going to look to see if there are any other questions here. Um, do you think using credit cards to pay monthly bills that pay cash rewards is a smart move and pay the bill in full monthly? Okay, so I think what you're describing is what Tara actually does, which is we have a credit card that gives you points for um, bonuses and cash back and stuff like that. If, you, if the card has a 30-day grace period, which all the ones we have have, I'm not sure, uh, which basically means if you pay it off the first time they bill you, you don't get charged interest. And if you're really good at making sure you actually pay it off each month and you never let it run into interest, then that can be good. And Tara uses that, uh, I think they're like thank you points or something on our card. I'm not really sure what exactly the benefit is, but it's like cashback or credit towards merchandise or something. And it seems to work great. So that would be fine. The main thing is I wouldn't do it if you're in debt or if you have a problem with your spending. Because then you put it on the card, it's really hard to motivate yourself to actually pay off the card. But like I said, if you have that totally under control, I would do it. So... Anyway, let me see what I, I'm just going to look real quick. Yes, have a great weekend, everybody. We're about to go ahead and go here. I just want to make sure I didn't miss any last-minute questions. I love you guys. Thanks for all the tips and answering my questions always. No life. It's great to have you here, and we're glad to help you. So, um, all right. 
How old is Jack? Jack is nine. He's about to be ten in June. And some of what he asks technically on things, I just have no... Um, I have very little understanding of some of the things he's got into. Sorry, I'm using a different microphone than usual, Jamie. Sorry. Um, I'll need to speak up a little more. Do you know how a crystal oscillator works? That's the kind of stuff. Oh, so I'll be frantically getting everything together because we're getting ready to leave and something unexpected has happened in the morning before school. And, they, and Jack will come to me and ask, How does a crystal oscillator work? And then he'll start explaining in detail to me how it works. I'm thinking, I'm trying to remember to like do the peanut butter sandwich yet, and oh, we gotta get the stuff in the car. So anyway, all right, um, I'm about to wrap it, but I will answer one more question here. Probably one more question. Uh, slay this. Sorry, slay this debt. Um, credit cards for cash back points. Tara uh, uses. We have one that we pay off every month, and. It has some kind of points, and she likes that, and that's cool. So, uh, how is her smile so great? Thank you, Laura. I would say part of it is because Jesus has changed my life, and uh, part of it's the way that God wired me in the first place. But I appreciate it. I'm glad it's a blessing to everyone, and it sure makes me feel good to hear that. Um, the last question I was thinking I was going to answer is, where's Tara? So, if you haven't been here for the whole thing, Tara and Ellie uh, both went on a getaway uh, they left on Tuesday, and they'll be back Sunday up into the mountains where there's some hot springs and stuff, and they're go just going to, they've been relaxing in the hot springs and uh, staying in the hotel and staying in the pool and basically doing a lot of not very much, just to take it easy. And we took away her computer. I have it right here. So she could not be tempted to do anything even thinking about work while she's gone. So I'm sure she'll be happy to talk about it when she gets back. So anyway... It's been great talking to all of you. I uh, have a blessed weekend. Thank you. You too, Margaret and everybody. And we will see you on Monday. Tara will be back. I have no idea what we're talking about that day, but I'm sure it will be good. So we'll see you then. And thanks again. <laughs> Bye. Uh, let's see if I need to figure out how to shut this off again. So see you Monday. Bye.